Um, he, he has a shotgun with me as, <laughs> you know, as, as, as the world ends in an apocalypse. I don't know, you know. So, yeah, it, it, it is. There are some just... It, it, look, it's... To answer the question, I mean, it's a, it's a totally ridiculous concept. I mean, to actually think to yourself, you know, that the Massachusetts Insti Institute of Technology, you know, the MIT, for example, and EPC Global, the guys behind the RFID, um, have basically gone on record, and you can people can go Google it, and you will actually see that they've actually allocated a certain amount of bits, um, you know, for all product in the world from, you know, from automobiles, computers, all the way down to humans, razor blades, and grains of rice. So it, it's not as though you know we're making this stuff up. This stuff is is very much in in their journals. It's very much in their white papers, um, and humans are very much on the hit list. Very much well, so. As you said, if the, if the barcode for human beings already there, then what we're actually talking about is their ways of getting us to accept them, sticking it either on us or in us, so that we can't actually get away from it. We are to be tagged, literally. Exactly, and look how it's moving as well. It, it's very slick. I mean, when you actually look at the um, the um, the pay per go system, base. Uh, Greg's lines just dropped out. So if you bear with us, now's a good time to play our first song. Actually, here comes the sun. All right, let's have a look. See if we can get him back. Sorry about that. <laughs> Hi, Greg, you're back, mate. Excellent. I am. My Actually, my, my machine decided to do a Windows update. Oh, mate, what was <laughs> the probability of that? <laughs> it's all good. Uh, yes, yeah, so where were we? <laughs> and I'll give that a bit of a disclaimer as well. So yeah, w what it comes down to, this is just an all-intermeshed system. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. from the smart grid to biometrics to the Internet to Internet filtering to... Um, you know, product level um, tagging to sensor networks, to ambient intelligence, to the Internet of Things. I mean, it's just, it's almost like one big spider web and the, or one big octopus and each octopus arm. Yeah, each octopus arm fulfills a function and the function is to basically, you know, strangle the world in a sense. You can see how the, uh, they won't make it compulsory, they'll just make it impossible to live in the normal world without having all these things so you'll want to get it most of you you know what I mean exactly it's, it's, exactly I mean for me you know to, to go to the states I had to go through the visa waiver program now I, I will not go through a naked scan I'll, I'll rather just be you know searched just as yeah. um, as principal but you That's know what I'll happens when it gets strip off rather than go through one <laughs> oh hell yeah I'll strip through naked I don't care it's like it'll give us a bit of publicity as well for the for the movement Better that than by scattering <laughs> radiation poisoning, anyway. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, can you uh, give us a, a broad overview, then, of what you think's going on with all this? Because I know we were all over the place earlier on, um, and there's a few of our listeners who won't have got into this that much, you know, so tell us what it's all about, mate. Basically, what it is about, I mean, what we are seeing, and this is, um, and the average person can see that out there, is that, excuse me, every sector is basically being controlled, dominated, and squeezed. So, you know, the average person out there is working longer, he's working harder, um, basically bringing less money home for the family and the like. But the, the question is, why is this, let's say, squeezing occurring, um, you know, from every sector, whether we're seeing it from the military industrial complex, we're seeing it from um, the security angle, we're seeing it from, um, you know, the, the powers that be wanting to know, you know, what we're doing, how we're doing it, when we're doing it, and where we are when we are doing it. So the 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 point, I guess, behind this is is it's every particular area is starting to merge into, let's say, a collective plan or collective goal um, and the, the goal, ultimately, I mean, it, it just becomes something as simple as what the, 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 the true agenda is, is to take you, the person, um, and we have what's out there, which is called the Internet of Things. Now, what the Internet of Things is, it is um, a grand plan from the top tech giants in the world 
which is to bring every single product on the face of this earth from, you know, jumbo jets to sewing needles and to make them digitally aware. So to basically have trillions of devices around the world all being, um, all going online, all being able to be queried and accessed. And unfortunately, it happens that on the agenda that the human being is also on the hit list. So what they want to do is actually turn you, if you like, into a node. So um, in an actual computer system where you basically exist as a particular node within the system. So you have no more um, say than, let's say, that sewing needle. You have no more say than that cornflakes bottle that has an RFID chip. Um, and look, we've got large companies out there like IBM who has basically stated, you know, that um, any person um, can actually become digitally aware and networked. So uh, although the, pr- the plan sounds absolute grandiose and, and almost to the point of science fiction, the, the point is that the patents are there. The patents are there. The, the seed funding is there. The agendas are there, and then obviously, you know, you have the the, the, the driving motivators um, that keep pushing this this thing into 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 full full view. Yeah, yeah, it's it's the net titans basically, isn't it? The, every facet of normal life is going to be infested with these things one way or the other. So it'll get to the point where you won't become forced to have one of these initially. You'll just have to have one because nothing works if. Whether it an electric door in a supermarket or a public transport, none of it will work for you unless you've got these um, digital devices about you, whether they're in you or on you. Um, you've got a digital, a chipped passport. I believe the yeah. driving license is a chip now. Um, it Correct. Just, it will get to the point where you simply won't be able to function without adopting all these things. And that's what's actually, <clears throat> excuse me, that's what's actually happened out in Australia. You have had um, some civil libertarians stating, look, we will not take this new passport that has, you know, um, a biometric identifier in it. And they state, well, you, you can't use our roads. These are the mm-hmm. conditions of travel. Um, and we, we do not recognize, you know, so you obviously have other movements out there like the free man movement that, you know, um, states that we have, you know, the free right to passage and the like, but um, quite often with the free man movement, even though it um, is ideologically sound, um, when you've actually followed it through the court systems in Australia, you have had some people that have succeeded, um, and then unfortunately some people that have actually fallen totally on their face with it. So, yeah, yeah so it's exactly like you say. Pardon, it's sir? It's exactly the same over here. We've had some successes and some failures, but uh, a cynic amongst us would say that you're trying to hold gangsters to their own rules, and basically they, they won't lose for the sake of bending their own rules. So exactly, yeah, and you know the whole, you know the whole honour, dishonour, and you know, you know. So when somebody goes in with the moral and ethic construct and says, you know, look, you know, the court system is honourable, and I will stay in honour and the like. What we need to understand is the people that gravitate to these positions of power within the court system, they don't give a crap realistically about honour and dishonour, regardless of what they should be doing. Um, they, they will basically defend their position, um, their income stream, and, and obviously appease the people that have actually put them there. So, in a way, I do see the free, the, the you know the free man movement as a bit of a delusion. Simply because I, I did get into it and I did research it and I um, I hope for the best and unfortunately, um, you know th- that that isn't a solution, especially when we move to, um, yeah, and people will then go back and go, what is the solution? And look, I, I don't have the answers to these things. I mean, th- these are really big questions where um, you know, seeing where the the world is moving, where we're moving to a carbon um, a carbon measuring society. Um, that, that for me, I think one of the major things that people need to resist is this whole global warming fiasco because once we have introduced and reduced man to actually being a carbon um, emitting monster, if you like, that needs to be measured and quantified, um, 
you know, that, that's where the, the game truly rolls over into into their hands. Absolutely, yeah. It, it, one thing that occurs to me, I think, is if... Now, how can I frame this? Well, put it this way. If we don't do something about the RFID issue and that whole notion of being commoditized, barcoded, chipped, whatever it be, the absolute certainty is that the Freeman thing is out of the window because it won't matter a toss whether you consent or not. Then you'll have consented as the swipe you run through the, the door of the courts, basically. You, all your choice is taken from you when it's your consent will be issued then as a matter of course through this RFID thing. So we yeah. certainly need to acknowledge that I have some faith in the notions of sovereignty and whatnot. It certainly provides me with a, a framework to explain myself, I guess. Yeah. I'm not sure whether I should. But at, at the end of the day, the sovereign movement is dead in the water if the chipping thing comes in. And worse than that, this whole stuff about mind-reading equipment and what have you, because anybody that hasn't looked into that, Basically, you need to look into that. The degree to which they know what you're thinking and can administer drugs and whatever, God knows whatever else, to correct that thinking. The, the only thing that's prevented them doing it in the past, in my opinion, is the technology wasn't there to allow them to. And if you start exactly. looking at it now, the technology's there. As I mentioned earlier on, a, a device I came across, um, euphemistically called the brain pacemaker, which can is a feedback loop basically it's a derivative from a device for diabetics that was sensing how much you know the blood sugar levels and then administering insulin automatically and they've now got it to the stage yeah they've now got it to the stage this is how it all intertwines I mean when you look at Verichip for example um, they're working on you know an in vivo um, glucose sensoring device so you'll have the Verichip um the very chip itself will obviously have a you know uh, a sensor on it that will obviously detect you know the, the glucose levels within the system, but then they are obviously working on a miniaturized version, um, and now we're moving into the worlds of nanotech where you could actually have a delivery system of insulin within that chip in the future, yeah. which will actually deliver the right amount of insulin, and that is when our position starts becoming. A lot more eroded because they obviously are then delivering um, a service to a demographic that is quite ha- not quite happy. I mean, you know, who would want to be a diabetic and obviously be you know jabbing needles into themselves, you know, three, four, five times a day? So, you know, they have obviously seen the demographic and said, well, look, if we can get this particular product into um, a demographic that is already, um, you know quite happy, not quite happy, but or accustomed to um, actually, you know, putting needles into themselves. And we can say, look, th- this product will, um, although it needs to be replaced, you know, every three months and the like, um, gone are the days where you actually have to introduce a needle into the system. So, mm. you know, we, we need to understand that th- th- these people are, are, are true geniuses. Um, there's no, two, I mean, they're, they're psychopaths, um, yeah. but a, but a psychopath is... Sorry. This is the, if you if you think of all the different ways that this stuff's going to be slipped into our world view, there's um, there's as you said there's cartoons, mainstream media for children where they're constantly just normalising these concepts in their brains for them, so they'll grow into adults that just take it for granted that you have things in, under your skin that deals with your illnesses and stuff, and uh, you've got other issues like. Let's face it, it's only a matter of time now before the interface um, prosthetic legs directly with the mind so that paralysed people can have artificial legs that walk when the mind tells them to and stuff. And I'd be the first to applaud that sort of thing. The technology is fantastic if it's used for, you know, for decent things, but unfortunately we all know what they'll use it for. Yeah, uh, exactly, and that's the point. I mean, look, they're very aware that... Um, you know, they'll always go into market. I mean, obviously, with a university, for example. So, you know, going back to the um, the mind reading that you're bringing up, 